This digital media presentation will address radiation doses in radiology, specifically looking at the current statuses, concerns, and prospects for x-ray, fluoroscopy, CT, and PET medical imaging modalities. This presentation was created by the members of Group 2. I'm Jeffrey, and I'll be starting off by talking about x-ray imaging. Currently, x-rays stand as the oldest and most frequently used imaging modality. X-ray imaging emit high-energy electromagnetic electrons that hit a target anode to release an X-ray photon. The images produced by these photons as they pass through our bodies are used for a wide range of purposes. According to Better Health, a blog designed to educate the public on relevant health and wellness topics, X-rays are not just used for diagnosing bone fractures, but also in detecting tumors, fluid buildup, infections, and foreign bodies. Although X-rays have proved very reliable and effective, they don't come without their drawbacks. Due to high energy electrons used to produce an X-ray photon, we are exposed to radiation that can cause DNA mutations, which have the potential to lead to cancer. According to the World Health Organization and the United States government, X-rays are classified as carcinogens. The amount of radiation an individual is exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis is known as the natural background radiation. We use this scale to quantify the amount of radiation an X-ray emits. The natural background radiation we are exposed to primarily consists of radon, a radioactive gas from the natural breakdown of uranium found in soil, cosmic rays, mostly from the sun, and plant produce we eat, as plants are able to absorb radiation from the surroundings and pass it on to the fruits or vegetables they produce. A chest x-ray, for example, quantifies for about 2.4 natural background radiation days, while a spinal x-ray is approximately 182 natural background radiation days. Although radiation potency increases depending on where the image is taken on the body, the benefits far outweigh the negative outcomes. Future research at MIT is looking at new ways to recreate X-ray photons without the expensive equipment and intensive energy required. Using a two-dimensional pure carbon form of graphene and the help of photons emitted from a laser beam, Photons as powerful as X-rays can be emitted ranging from infrared to X-ray on the electromagnetic spectrum. This would allow for much less harmful radiation while still maintaining a quality X-ray image. Using this technology, we hope to be able to use devices the size of our hand to look inside a patient's body. Microscopy is a medical imaging technique that uses a continuous X-ray beam to obtain real-time moving images of anatomical structures. Fluoroscopy is used in a large variety of procedures to diagnose or treat patients. Some examples of the uses of fluoroscopy include barium X-rays or enemas, which allow you to see the movement of structures such as the throat or gastrointestinal tract as barium, a contrast agent, moves through them. Arthrography, which allows for the visualization of joints and their movement, as well as to guide injections into the joint space. Fluoroscopy is also commonly used to guide the placement of devices such as intravenous catheters or stents to specific locations inside the body. Despite the obvious benefits to using fluoroscopy, there are potential risks that are associated with its use. The radiation dose a patient receives from fluoroscopy varies largely from procedure to procedure and has the potential to result in relatively high radiation doses, especially for complex procedures where fluoroscopy must be used for long periods of time. Typical fluoroscopic dose rates average around 0.02 gray per minute or 20 milligray, but can reach higher levels such as 200 milligray per minute. According to current data, skin reactions begin to occur after approximately 2 gray and effects become observable a few hours after the procedure. At radiation doses of 5 gray and higher, medically important reactions begin to occur and often don't become visible until a few weeks after the procedure. Another major concern of fluoroscopy is that x-rays, a form of ionizing radiation, are used and therefore there is a chance that the radiation could induce cancer later in life. The Australian Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety Agency, also known as ARPANSA, has a list of commandments in its safety guide that are listed here for reducing the radiation dose for fluoroscopy in accordance with the ALARA principle. If the fluoroscopy procedure is performed by a qualified professional, nearly all radiation-induced injuries can be prevented without compromising the efficiency of the procedure. Any remaining radiation risk is usually outweighed by the potential benefit to the patient. 
I'm Ankit, and I'll be talking about CT scans. Computer tomography imaging, also known as CT scanning, was invented in 1972. A CT scan uses X-rays to make slices of images which can be viewed on a computer. They are similar to plain X-rays, however, they generate multiple slices of images rather than just one. A conventional scanner can take up to 640 slices of images. Benefits of the CT scanners are It can be used to show very detailed 2D or 3D images of the inside of a body such as lungs, brains, abdominal organs, bones and blood vessels. It eliminates the need of surgery to look inside a body. Furthermore, the radiation does not stay in the body after the scan is finished. Finally, the process is painless, accurate and fast. The CT scan has various effects on a human body. We are exposed to 1.5 millisieverts of background radiation every year. In comparison, a CT scan exposes us to a dose of radiation ranging from 1 to 15 millisieverts. The amount of radiation you are exposed to depend on the number of pictures taken and the part of the body being examined. Generally, patients are exposed to higher amount of radiation through CT than a normal X-ray. Roughly. A CT of the chest can be equivalent to having at least 100 chest x-rays. While this may sound a lot for one CT scan, the increase in risk for developing cancer in a lifetime is small, which is roughly an increase by 0.04% as stated by the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Radiologists. In case of the use of a dye, one may have allergic reactions which include nausea, vomiting, sneezing, or one may have infections at the site of injection. The radiation dose is being constantly reduced and monitored. For instance, the Alliance of Radiation Safety in Pediatric Imaging had initiated Image Gently campaign with a specific objective to reduce the radiation dose for pediatric imaging. Furthermore, MRIs and ultrasounds which do not use radiations are increasingly being used as an alternative to CTs where appropriate. Hi, I'm Pranav and I'll be talking about the radiation dose, status and concerns of PET scan. To begin, let's start off with what is PET scan. A PET scanning allows non-invasive diagnostic imaging of metabolic processes using short-lived radioisotopes. In contrast to CT scan and MRI which provide information on structure, PET scan can quantify biochemical and physiological function. Moving on to the current status of PET scan, the most commonly used radio tracer is a FDG PET, uh, which is a glucose analog used in PET scan, which is injected into the patient before performing the process. Uh, also, the technological advancement in combination of PET CT imaging modalities have been seen. Here, we can see a simple timeline depicting the development of PET scan since 1998. Both the PET component and the CT component of the PET CT system have improved dramatically. For PET fast scintillators with high stopping power such as lutetium orthosilicate and gandolinium orthosilicate have become available and use of time of flight, PET led to a significant improvement in lesion detection, especially when images display significant background noise. While performing the PET scan, the patient is injected with a radioactive dye in the form of glucose or protein to see the interaction of the radioactive material with the, within the cells and the localized part. A PET CT examination with included diagnostic CT results in increased patient radiation exposure compared with the standalone CT or PET examination. As the effective dose is a combination of the dose from PET and the dose from CT, it is well known that the cancer risk is induced from radiation. A PET CT exposes you to about 25 MSP of radiation. This is equal to about 8 years of average background radiation exposure. One important aspect in evaluating the use of PET CT scanning in medical practice is the potential risk from radiation exposure and this should be quantified and understood so that the risk benefit ratios can be assessed. Moving on to the future prospects of the PET scan, there's a lot of clinical trials going on for the newly potential radioactive tracers and also various studies have been carried out for the new proposed 3D method for the decrease in dose of the PET scan. Also various studies have been going on for the diagnosis of various conditions in the human body using the PET CT imaging modality.